Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Today, we will not be working on this bird. I'm going to take a little break from him. And we're going to carve a character out of this book. This is a great little book that I found. Twelve Patterns. Here's the author's name. Now, this book only cost $17. And I got it at a local woodcraft, but it's also available on Amazon and in bookstores. And most carving pattern books only have three or four. This has 12 patterns in it. So for that price, this is a great deal and it's a good book. Here's the little pattern that we're going to be carving today. And here's the basswood we're going to be using. And I'm going to spray adhesive, or actually glue stick, this guy right on here. And we'll cut him out on a bandsaw. So you've seen me do cut out patterns on bandsaws before, and this is what it looks like. Now this is a more advanced project it, not not for beginners um, this would probably be a little bit much for a beginner but for a carver that's been carving for a while this is a nice book so I saved the block that had the pattern on it so I could find the center and now that I found the center I am using the side piece to give me a flat reference point to use with my finger to find the center so you can see I just keep my finger stiff lock my hand in this position and it gives you an approximate uh, center center line as you go all the way around Now, the reason why I'm not showing the inside of the book is I, I am going to respect the rights of uh, the copyrights of that book. But believe me, it, it gets into detail. It shows fur patterns. It is one of the better books for carving little characters like this uh, that I've seen in a long, long time. Great little book. So another advantage to this book is it has multiple patterns from different angles, from underneath, from the sides, even paw print patterns. So I used the patterns that were available to come up with the shape of the head, the arms, the legs. Um, basically, all this is just right out of the book. Um, where I put the X's, that's going to be removed. You see the front legs sit kind of inside the back legs. Back legs stick out further. The carving will end up uh, with the head slightly tilted, a little asymmetrical, but that's how you get character. You know, you don't make it look static. You have a little bit of movement in it, which is wonderful. Now, I'm not going to make it exactly like the picture in the book. I'm, I'll put a little twist on it. I'll make it, I'll make it my own, as every artist should. So, here I am outdoors. I'm just right down the street from where I live. Ashburn Library is right there. And uh, we're going to start rounding out this little fox here. We're going to take the corners off all the way around and it'll become much more comfortable to hold once all those edges are off. This little knife is a OCC detailer. 
and you can see it starts off pretty good here but as I go the uh, leading edge of the blade folds over and just starts tearing at the wood uh, making it difficult to carve. It's the only knife I had with me at the time. Um, so you'll see me use the tip of the knife uh, because it remains sharp. This particular knife, now I have another OCC knife and, and uh, I haven't had this issue with it, but this particular one, um, the blade is so thin that it always seems like it folds over on me. Now what I'm going to show you here is when you carve with a dull knife, see how it, it crushes the fibers of the wood, it just crushes them. When you have a sharp knife, it'll give you a clean, almost a polished look. It'll have a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, if you if it if you see your knife crushing the wood, uh, just stop and and uh, replace either replace the knife or get a new blade or, or sharpen it. So I'm kind of struggling to carve this with this knife. You can see how it's crushed the wood here. Uh, it becomes much harder to carve with a dull knife and it's just not safe. Um, I actually did not have another knife with me so I'm just kind of trying to use the tip of this knife which is still sharp but the majority of the blade about midway back to the handle has, has rolled over on me. So I'm just trying to make the best of a bad situation here. So I've had some questions about uh, what type of wood do I carve with? I carve with basswood. Uh, the, the best type of basswood that you can get, if you can get your hands on it, is northern grown because it grows slower it's more even grained and easier to carve um, the southern basswood grows so quick it, it gets more of a grain to it and tends to be a little darker in color so if, if you have your choice of going in and, and picking out basswood northern grown light in color and light and weight. The second most popular question that I get is what kind of knife do you use? For beginners, I would say use an X-Acto blade. Number 11 X-Acto blade uh, just to avoid the confusion of sharpening. Now when I'm finished with this box, I will get back to the bird. Um, I have not forgotten the bird, but this is usually how I work. I will start a project, uh, work on it, especially if it's a very detailed carving that's going to take, a, um, let's say, a month or so. I'll take a break from it. I'll do a, a quicker, easier carving. Uh, for change of pace and then I'll go back to the bird so I'll do another video with this fox finish it up and paint it and then I'll go back to the bird and we'll finish that up all right so we're moving right along once again don't forget to use your fingers to feel symmetry. Your fingers can feel symmetry much easier than you can see it. There's, you run into a lot of little optical illusions that can kind of trick you. So you use your fingers as you run across and you can feel symmetry easier than you can see it. So 
So, if you start having to just use brute force to carve through wood like this, uh, don't. Um, I'm simply doing it because I'm caught between a rock and a hard place here. Um, and just, you can see how difficult it is to carve. Uh, so, don't do that. It's, uh, it's actually quite dangerous. I'm, I'm thinking and double thinking as I'm moving this blade, what's, what's in the way? What, what, if this blade slips, what am I going to cut? Um, but yet trying to hold it up to the camera. So I'm trying to be uh, safe, but you can see the effort it is taking to uh, go through that wood. It shouldn't be that hard to carve. The blade should slide through the wood, leave a nice polished, uh, shiny surface. Sign of a sharp knife. All right, I'm going to speed this up. Because I don't want to keep giving a lecture on what not to do. <laughs> but it certainly was a beautiful day to be outside carving. So I'm just continuing to, to round it out, to try to carve it to the round. That's why these center lines are so important. I'm gonna carry those center lines down through the middle of the ears, the middle of the tail, the middle of all four legs, because they all should be carved to the round. The snout as well. Now when I do part two of the fox, I'm going to go and start using palm gouges. Um, and that's something that I really haven't done too much of in, in with the videos that I've made in the past. Uh, but like I say, this is a more uh, advanced piece because of the inside like carving between the front legs uh, is going to require gouges uh, carving the eyes I'll be using fee gouge um, the ears I'll be using uh, inside the ears of Vayner so I'll be using a, a whole set of uh, palm gouges to do the next video and they can be expensive so they're for a more serious carver so here I am at a different area of the pond uh, the fountain would be off to the right you can see a pool uh, just up the hill to the right uh, and a Ashburn Libraries uh, off to your left. And I'm just continuing to round out this little fox. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up again. And don't forget, I am going to add a link down below for Buy Me a Coffee. I've recently added that and appreciate any support for the channel. Now you can see that I'm taking little tiny chips. Um, probably the, the biggest mistake I see people do is they try to just take big hunks of wood off uh, and it's just not a very good idea the 
the smaller the chip, the more control. It may take you a little longer, but that's okay. That's why you want to do carving. You want to take your time and enjoy it. Um, I just don't get the people that want to rush through a carving. Um, I think you'd enjoy it so much more if you take your time, take small chips, and control that blade. And there goes a plane, probably going to or coming from Dulles Airport, which isn't that far from here. Here I'm adding a little definition between the front and back legs. What I did is I just incised the line right on the pencil line that I drew earlier and then go in with these tiny little cuts, almost like a chip carving, and define both the front and the back leg. Now I'm cutting the outline for the space in between the two front legs and I'm going straight in on that pencil line and then I'll move my blade towards the center and remove the wood. I, I don't want to undercut those front legs too soon. I want to give some thickness to them so um, straight in next to the leg and then to remove it I'll move towards the center where the waste wood is and gently take that away. Now you can wait till later and, and do that with either a v-gouge or a, a small scoop gouge. Uh, it would be a whole lot easier like that. It would take less skill actually to do that uh, and I'll go over that uh, in in the next video with the fox when we get into the palm gouges I think that raven is trying to get my attention he's up in the tree hollering at me that is definitely something that I want to carve in the near future is a raven one of the smartest birds there are very, very intelligent birds. So if there's something that you would like to see me carve and, and take it step by step all the way through, let me know. Put a comment down below. I would appreciate it. And I'll try to work on uh, all the comments that I get. Um, is as far as I feel I can carve just about anything I put my mind to I'll take a photograph or reference photos and draw out the profile and I can get to just about any shape I want uh, through that process and I'll bring you along with a video here I'm just taking the edges off of the tail getting it rounded around. I will get it roughly shaped, but I'm gonna leave the detail for later. Now I did mention palm gouges earlier, but you could also use something like a Dremel if you have the Dremel bits to take it to the next step. Don't forget to check out my t-shirt I think therefore I make it'll be in the link in the descriptions below now here I have a number 11 exacto blade this is what I teach 
the beginners with. And you can see that gives a nice, smooth, almost a polished finish because it's sharp. Now I've sped it up here. Yeah, I don't curve that quick. Um, and you can see when you have a sharp blade, uh, it's not that big of a struggle. It's, you're just, that blade moves right through the wood. It's almost effortless. And once again, when usually I'm teaching beginners, uh, this is the knife that we'll use to simplify. And as they become better and more comfortable with a the knife, then they can move on to a more comfortable handle, uh, a, a better blade, something like a Helvy or an OCC. Or, um, there's, there's literally thousands of knives out there that you can get to carve with. Uh, and a, a lot of them are just wonderful knives. All right, so you can see I'm holding up the fox. It took a little bit more off the muzzle there. Looks more like a fox. Once again, this book, awesome book. I highly recommend it. So please like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.